Namaste, everyone, and welcome to Anchor the Light. And here we are again, Monday here in the United States, and well, at least in Southern California. And everywhere else, it's already Tuesday, and we continue with our teachings where we do our best to share as many of the ancient teachings as we can and um, accelerate our spiritual development. So more divine energy come down, we can anchor that spiritual light to make this a better world. That's the objective. So before we start, let's ask for blessings to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Chok Hok Sui, Maha Guji Meiling, we humbly ask for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your compassionate, purifying light, and soothing, healing energy. We thank you in full faith, and so it is. All right. So, interesting teaching, and some of you have heard of it uh, in different forms, so I'll show it to you again. It says, hmm, okay, make sure this shows up. Fragrance always remains on the hand that gives the rose. Okay, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> I think most of you are uh, well studied, and so you know what that means? Giving and receiving are two sides of the same coin. This one, uh, it's known in Asian proverbs. It's also known in the Middle East. So we just want to drive... Uh, a bit of uh, inner teachings into it, okay? So, let's start at the lowest level. Every time you give, you gain something out of it. That's why I remember when I took, a uh, long, long time ago, I took this, you know, in, in university, you're supposed to take economics. And I remember my teacher at that time, I forgot what the guy's name, he's a really nice guy, he said, <clears throat> and this is economics, he says, there is no such thing as pure altruism, okay? So it again. He said, this how many years ago? Geez, that was a long time ago. There's no such thing as true or absolute altruism. You know, when you're very altruistic, you're giving, and you don't expect anything back. He says, there's no such thing. Anyone who gives gets something out of it. I know, some of you still stuck with, yeah, but I was told you're not supposed to uh, expect anything when you give. Okay, that's pure nonsense. <laughs> complete nonsense. The question is why? It violates the law of cause and effect. For every cause, there's always an effect. Okay, we covered that before. Now, let's just go a little deeper. And the idea here is to break down all myths that are hindering you. There's no such thing as giving without receiving. It's always a cycle. Now, let's put it more in the positive. I should give at the minimum. At the minimum, you feel some level of, ah, I did something good, right? Now, let's try to put it in a different way. Your heart chakra, every time you give, it will inch open, right? It'll open up a little bit. That's why I remember my teacher used to say, you know, the higher beings, they're very, very smart. We think, as spiritual practitioners, we think that, when we give, and we give grudgingly, as they call it, nothing's happening. But actually, there is. So even if you give money to church, give money, give money to somebody who needs it, or somebody you don't like, you go, here, choke on it. <laughs> even if you give, and you don't give it willingly, there is still a positive effect on you. Okay? That's why... I'm sure you know people who give to church, go give to charity because they're forced to give, they still are benefiting. Two ways. One, when you give, you go, all right, I'm supposed to give to this organization, so here, because I have to give, uh, otherwise uh, I will look bad. Okay? You're not giving because you willingly give it, but you give it because of pressure. Even when you do that, Two things happen. Number one, your heart chakra is still inching open. Number two, by the law of karma, again, let me do it again. It's the law of karma, not yours or my opinion of karma. <laughs> okay, so get over it. And people say, oh, but I don't believe. <laughs> if go find that teacher if, if you're still stuck there. Okay, it's a law, period, full stop. So two things happen. Even if you give without giving it willingly, 
your heart chakra is still opening a tiny bit. And number two, by the law of karma, that good deed still comes back to you. It's in what form it comes back to you that will change depending on your attitude. So let's break it down. When I give money to charity, I'm planting material seeds, right? Money is physical. So you have material good karma coming back to you. However, if you give grudging like here, like that, you do not get the good emotional karma that comes with it. Make sense? So, for example, when you love someone, you care for someone, you give, okay, I give because I really want to help you. Right then and then, you have the material karma you planted, material seed. There's the material prosperity karma, good karma, come, uh, karma coming back to you. Simultaneously, I should give you go, honey, I love you, or, you know, this organization pe- uh, feed hungry children, you know, okay, they really need, I really want to help them. I should do that. You're also simultaneously planting good emotional seeds. That's why I should give, ah, you feel good. Make sense? The easiest way to experience this is something like this. I always guide people on this simple exercise. Recall a time when you gave a gift to someone you love. Someone you love. It could be romantic love, parents, children, someone you a good friend, whatever it is. And you go, okay, I got this thing that I want to give to this person. And as you gave it to them, right, you're waiting. You're, what are you waiting for? You're sitting there, okay, open it, open it, open it. So what are you waiting for? You're waiting for that magic instant, that magic moment. They open it and go, oh, I love this. How does that make you feel? That was worth all the traffic, all the inconveniences, the cost, whatever it is, to get that gift because you're waiting for that magic moment to make them happy. True or not true? You see, at that time, you have the material karma. You plant it, right? You give them a physical gift. You have the emotional karma. What is the emotional karma? You want it so much to make this person happy. As soon as they got it and they're happy, (gasps) it hits you. This is your emotional karma. So if you're smart, not a dumbass, I mean, uh, (laughs) or in ancient times you call it fool, right? A fool will give and go like this. So they get the material karma, but they don't get the emotional good karma. But if you're smart, you go, I'm already giving. I'm going to to enjoy it. So as you give something material, you also imbibe it it with good energy. Like, you know, I really want this person to be better. So as you give, you fill it with love. So in the process, there's material good karma. There's also emotional good karma. You get get the best of both worlds. What else do you want? Make sense? Because when you give, it leaves an effect on the giver. That is the deeper meaning. So, the opposite is also true. When you give anger, resentment, you dump negative energy at someone, you also get that karmically coming back to you. You see, unfortunately, people have a tendency to only quote the good, the, the law of karma if it's in their favor. I was a good to these people, so of course good things happen to me. They don't realize if you keep dumping negative emotions and thoughts towards someone like your partner, your friend, or people you work with, it also has a karmic effect coming back. I mean, for the life of me, I can't understand how people could figure this out. They keep bad-mouthing their partner, their boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. They keep dumping all this negative energy, not in front of them, because in front of them, they're like, yeah, yeah. But behind, they're like, yeah, that jerk, that piece of no good, whatever. They keep shooting negative energy at this person, and they're complaining, how come the relationship is not working? Uh, Are you trying to plant orange seed and miraculously expect apples to show up? That's what you're doing. You keep dumping on that guy, that is no good piece of whatever. And then suddenly, as you keep dumping all these negative thoughts on that person, you expect them to suddenly, honey, I love you so much. You're such a good friend. It's like, in what universe do you live in? Not to mention 
this one more piece. I remember my teacher used to say, a person who throws mud is first full of mud. <laughs> so that thing about giving roses leaves a sense, uh, leaves a scent of fragrance in your hand. <laughs> when you dump poo poo on someone, it leaves poo poo in your hand. We always have a tendency to just look at the positive side. But you don't realize the law works both ways. So if you're smart, you cover both sides. You refrain, 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 yeah, refrain, or don't. Dump something on someone you don't want. And be smart to go, what do I want? I want to be happy, I want to be prosperous, I want to be loved, I want to be loving. That's what you give away. It's the same thing. So it's just a romanticized way of saying, in this quote here says, the fragrance always remains on the hand, the one that gives the rose. Oh, it's so romantic, so nice. Yeah. The stink also leaves a trace on the hand that gives poop to other people. It goes both ways. Of course, if you focus on that part, mm, people don't like listening to you. Because it's not very high vibe. It's not very positive. Hello, it's reality. Get over it. It works both ways. If you keep dumping stuff, negative stuff for other people, you get it back. If you're nice to people, you're projecting loving energy and be kind to other. That also comes out. It goes both ways. That's why I said the difference between having inner teachings and no inner teachings is you get to choose which one you plant. That is the difference. That's how the soul, okay, listen carefully, navigates its future. I remember my teacher used to say, he said, you know, these people going to clairvoyance, going to psychics, trying to, trying to put, you know, find out what their future is. And he goes, it's easier to create your future than predict it. You know why? Because... It's as simple as this. Write this down. Again, this didn't come from me. I'm just sharing with you what was taught to us. The law of karma, okay, law of karma, again, not yours or my opinion of it. The law of karma is a spiritual technology that helps us create and navigate our future. Write it down. The law of karma is a spiritual technology you know, you got technology, right? But this one is a spiritual technology. The law of karma is a spiritual technology, spiritual technology that allows us to create and navigate our future. So create means what? Uh-huh. Okay. Let me see. What do I want? What do I what do I not want? Since the law of karma says whatever I throw out will hit me back. Hmm, what do I not want to hit me? I don't want people to steal from me. I don't want people to to hate me. I don't want people to say negative stuff at me. Okay. So let's not dump it out. What do I want? Oh, I want to be loved. I want to be prosperous. I want to be happy. I want to be this. I want to be, okay, let me just dump that on people because I know it'll come back to me. That's simple. Don't get emotional about it. It is a law. So the law of karma is a spiritual technology to create and navigate. Now, where does the word navigate comes in? Well, how does it how does it come into play? Navigate is very very simple. When things are not going your way, you go, oh man, things are not going my way. Things are going bad. Hmm. Okay. Well, let me let me not add to it. If this relationship between me and this person is not going well, let me not add to it by keep shooting negative thoughts at this person because I'm just making it worse. Okay. How do I turn it around? Uh, hmm. Okay. Well, let's change it. Uh, I want to make it better. So let me keep planting good seeds. Let me keep planting good seeds. I'll give you a very simple example. Many years ago, I've shared this with some of you. If you've been with me for a while, we have this student uh, who came to uh, one of my teacher's classes, right? Grandmaster Chok Hok Sui. And he was sharing with the teacher. He says, you know, there's this guy in the office who's a pain in the ass, pain in the neck, wherever the pain, to everybody in, at, the, at work. Everyone. Nobody can stand this guy. So this student, based on what he learned in the class, what message I taught him, he did an experiment for about a month. And his experiment was every day he would project good energy towards this person. You know when you do meditation twin hearts, he projects 
you know, when you bless the earth, he blesses the guy. May this person be blessed with peace and love. While everybody's dumping all this negative energy at him, in his case, he goes, I'll be smart about this. Let me do an experiment. Let me just keep dumping good energy at this guy. Just for experimentation. So he sends him love. And then when a person's nasty to him, he'll be kind to him. Just purely for experimental purpose. Now, the reason we know about this, because Messi Cho was telling us the story, he said, with this student, after about approximately a month, start noticing something very different. This guy started being so nice to him. Okay? Now, here's the interesting part. This literally isolates his situation with everybody else. He said, he told Messi Cho, he said, this guy was nice to him, but still a pain to everybody. What's the difference? He changed what he was throwing at this person. Get that? <laughs> Think about it. This guy, this negative guy was nasty to everyone. This student, all he did was change his input. Start blessing the person being nice to him, and by the law of karma, again, nobody's opinion of karma, the law of karma, just weird. The guy start being nice to him and still being nasty to everybody else. Why? It's obvious. He's the one who changed the input. That's why the output was different. Everybody else still kept dumping negative energy. Even though, listen carefully, he did it Okay, this student, he did it with a positive outcome as an ulterior motive. You go figure. Because some of you are still stuck. Well, you know, when you give, you should not expect anything. You should not expect blah, 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 whatever. You're just getting emotional over something that is just a simple, logical thing to do. You want to have apples? Hello, plant apple seeds. You want orange, don't expect to plant apple seeds and keep waiting for the orange to show up. That doesn't make sense. You see, the reason we're sharing this with you, because spiritual teachings still make sense. Some people are under the impression, just because it's a spiritual teaching, I leave my brain in the car. No, it still makes sense. I'll leave you with one thought. If you want to spiritually evolve faster, okay, and still have a good life, because I know some of you are stuck with the notion because somebody told you, you know, if you're a spiritual person, you have to suffer. Otherwise, you're not a spiritual person. Sounds familiar? I grew up with that. I grew up with that. People <clears throat> growing up in the Philippines, which is a very uh, Roman Catholic country, at least at that time, this is how we were told. Or if they don't tell you, it's always the perception. If you're not suffering for Christ, you're not spiritual. If you have a good life, you're prosperous, you're happy, and so on and so on, you're not a spiritual person because to be a spiritual person, you have to suffer. If you're still stuck with that, I got good news for you. You can be happy, you can be prosperous, you can have a good life, and still be a spiritual person. You don't like it? You know what's next, right? Go find another teacher. That's it. So we'll leave you with one line that just has stuck me with me. And um, Message has shared it with us, and I even share it at uh, UPW with thousands of people. The soul grows by giving, not accumulating. Write it down, tattoo it to your brain. The soul grows. Okay, the soul evolves by giving, not accumulating. You say, okay, what's the thing? What this teaching is doing? It's very, very simple. If you simply focus on giving and giving, the receiving takes care of itself. So the soul will evolve. The problem is, everyday people, they focus so much on taking, giving, taking, 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 taking and not giving, that's why. It's like someone 
inhaling, keep on inhaling, don't exhale, and you feel like they're exploding. That's it. When you give, you are already receiving. The only thing that's left, and I'll leave you with one thought, is a lot of you still stuck with guilt. Guilt of what? Well, I don't know. If I receive, if things are improving, uh, maybe I'm not a spiritual person. Disintegrate that thought form. Otherwise, you give, you give, and you don't want to receive. It still comes back to you. It's waiting at the door. And I've used this analogy with you before. It's just like all the good karma is generated by being kind, being loving, very giving, right? All the effects of that is at the door. It's at the door. It's like... Mm, mm, mm. And then when you go, okay, by learning to receive, I'm not a bad person. It's just, you just open that door, boom, it hits you. So you learn to give, you learn to receive. Then you'll be a happy person. Done. Finish. Make sense? That's all. That's the teaching is very simple. Let's meditate. To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers, personally to my teacher, Master Tokok Sri Mahaguru Jumeli, we humbly ask for divine light, divine love. Thanking, thank you for opening our hearts, our minds, our souls to giving and receiving. Thank you for your compassionate, purifying light and soothing healing energy. We thank you in full faith, and so it is. All right, put your hands on your heart area. Be aware of your crown. I am that. I'm not the body. I'm not the emotion or the thought. I am the soul. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence to regulate my mind, a spiritual being of divine love to regulate my feelings and emotions, a spiritual being of divine will and power to regulate the actions and movements of this physical body. I am that, the soul, the spiritual self. Now just be still. I, the soul, am connected in one to my higher soul. I, the higher soul, am connected in one to the connected in one to the divine spirit, the divine spark within me. I am a child of God, meaning we're all still growing and evolving. I am one with God, I am one with all. There's only oneness. Just be still. We are one. There's only oneness. Open your hands in blessing. Be aware of your heart and your hands. We're going to do meditation twin hearts as taught to us by my teacher, Grand Master Tohoksvi. So be aware of your heart, your hands. Imagine the earth in front of you. Fill the earth with beautiful pink light. Allow your heart to open. Allow your heart to give, your soul to give. So be aware of your heart and your hands. Fill the earth with beautiful pink light. We will use the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere, within me, outside of me, in my home, my workplace, in the city I live in, the country, any place in the world where there is hatred, let me sow unconditional love. Where there is injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there is doubt, let me sow faith. Where there is despair, let me sow hope. Where there is darkness, let me sow light. And where there is sadness, let me sow joy. Just be aware of your heart and your hands. Allow yourself Allow your soul to give peace, love, forgiveness, hope and faith, light and joy to every person, every being on earth. So be it. Just be still, be aware of your heart and your hands, and let the energy of peace, love, forgiveness, hope and faith, light and joy just flow through you. So be it. Now be aware of your heart, take a deep breath. 
be aware of your crown, exhale. Just be aware of your crown. Your crown is filled with so much golden light. Let's share this golden light with every person, every being on earth. Fill your home, your workplace, the city you live in, the country, the entire world. Fill it with golden light. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and with kindness. May all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed without exception, so be it. May all be blessed. So be it. And just be still and let the golden light just pour through your crown, through your hands, and fill the entire earth in front of you. You and I are just the channels and the pipelines. Just let it flow through you. From the heart of God, may all be divinely blessed. So be it. Now be aware of your heart, be aware of your crown, take a deep breath, exhale, imagine golden light even brighter than before flowing through you, filling up the entire earth. Just say our hearts are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one, there's only oneness. So be aware of your heart, your crown, take a deep breath, and as you exhale, imagine golden light even brighter than before pouring through your hands filling your home, your city, your country, all the countries in the world, especially the ones that are at war, the countries that are people are suffering in any way, may all, them, all of them be filled with this beautiful golden light. From the center of the heart of God, through my spirit, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and with kindness. May all be blessed with inner and outer healing. May all be healed of their pain, sorrow, and suffering in any form. So be it. May all be blessed with understanding, with harmony, with goodwill, and the willingness to do good. So be it. May all be divinely blessed. So be it. Just be still and let the blessings keep pouring through you. Blessings be to all. Now lower your hands. Maintain your stillness. Just keep your eyes closed. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Imagine the beautiful golden light, the golden flame just floating above your head. Look at that golden light. Simultaneously be aware of the love within your heart. Send a stream of love from your heart up, up to the crown and into the golden light. Ah. And stay there. And listen. You, the soul, the spiritual self, a being of light is meditating. Just drift deeper and deeper into that golden light. Oh. 
be still. Be aware of the inner stillness. Be aware of the inner peace. And just simply let go and let whatever happens, happens. Let go now. Any sound, any noise you hear will just simply help you drift deeper and deeper into that inner stillness, that inner light. Let go now. Gently, very slowly, very gently and slowly, come back to your physical body. You can move your fingers and toes, help you slide back in a little faster. Take your time. Slowly come back. Okay, raise your hands. Imagine the earth in front of you. Imagine the people you love in front of you. Just fill them all with beautiful golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, with much happiness, with abundance and prosperity, and spiritual oneness. So be it. Bless your job, your career, your business with success, with progress, and more prosperity. So be it. May all be blessed. So be it. Now be aware of your feet and the base of your spine. Project golden light downwards into the earth. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it. Okay, let's give thanks to the divine Supreme God, divine Father, Mother. We thank you. To all the spiritual elders, to all the holy masters, saints, all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Tohok Sui Mahaguji Meili, we thank you for divine light, love. Thank you for your compassion, purifying light. Thank you for your healing energy, guidance, help, and protection. We thank you in full faith. So it is. All right. So I hope you had a good meditation. You know, when we do the meditation, Twin Hearts, or we do uh, the meditation, the Great Invocation, but 70% of the meditation is giving. And so as you give, your heart, your crown gets stretched apart, right? So much divine energy comes down. That energy comes down, cleanses all the stress and negative energy out of us. Leaves a big spiritual connection. Leaves you with inner peace and stillness. What else do you want? Literally, as St. Francis says, it is in giving that you receive. So this quote that we're using, the fragrance always remains on the hand that gives the rose, is actually underestimated. When you give, you give, you get more. 
By the way, I'll leave you with one thought. Huh? I keep saying that we end up being more, but it just came to me, so I thought I'd share it with you. I remember many years ago, you know, there's some people, they, they're very cynical, which is nothing wrong with it. It's just the way a person thinks. You know, these holidays like Christmas or whatever holiday it is where people are forced. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have a light, man. Okay. Forced to buy stuff. It's all these capitalists uh, f to buy stuff, to give stuff. You know, it's all a ploy. You know why I say that? Get a life. Who cares? <laughs> you know why? At least in that season, people who are selfish are given the opportunity to give. Think about it. Right? So stop complaining. Yeah, I hope you, yeah, you know, it's all a ploy so that people will buy stuff. Who cares? Get a life. At least at that time, the economy is being helped. Right? There are people who are lonely, people who are not giving much attention. At least they get a gift. You made somebody happy. And even if they give grudgingly, the givers actually, the heart gets slightly open. So be happy. That's that. Simple teaching. So we will see you in the next Anchor the Light. And again, uh, you're welcome to leave comments if you like. If you don't like it, sayonara, go find another teacher. Perfectly fine. <laughs> Just be happy. Learn to give, learn to share, and also learn to receive. Because as you give, you receive. It allows you to give more. As you give more, you learn to receive because this law of karma is always there, whether you like it or not. So be smart about it. Harness it. Namaste, everyone. You all take care. And we will see you in the next Anchor Light. God bless.